Nine heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed off there, 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 mean. Hello there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well and welcome back to a long awaited X-Plane 10 video. Now, when was the last time we did one of these? Probably about a year and a half ago now, it's been an absolute decade ago. And I told you why in a previous video, I think, maybe I didn't. But anyway, just to clear things up, my recording software, essentially with X-Plane, is broken. It crashes it as soon as I load my recording software, which at the time is DX Tori. Uh, it was just nail explain and explain would crash the desktop and so I just gave up and I was fed up of trying to fix it so I just didn't and to be honest there was nothing available at the time which really made me yearn for explain although explain is a very very good platform there was no real add-ons that made me go yes I need to be inside that simulator right this second and be flying and making videos with it um, I'd made the video the 757 and the only other one that came out was really the Jar Design A330 but that in my books can wait. Uh, until this thing came out that is, this is the IXCG737 Classic. Now a few weeks ago I put some videos on my channel which were not made by me, they were made by Web uh, Ben Weston even uh, at Airline to Sim and he has uh, a friend that he brought over that flies this thing in real life and basically it was a three part video series showing you exactly how the IXCG 737 Classic looks from a real pilot's point of view. Different things, different quirks, different ways of operating it. This, that and the other. And I figured before I put my spin on things it would be useful for you to get familiar with how the real guys do it and then I can come and reverse that entire process and show you how not to do it. Joke's on me I guess. Anyway, um, so I asked you on Facebook, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I don't like that sound, although the sound is volumetric. It's, uh, it whines too much. For some reason when I look over there my frame rates die, but then if I look over here, it's beautiful. It's really weird. I don't know what's over there. Anyway, the point of this video series. I want to do something a little bit different. Now I've always done kind of flights from A to B. Uh, and they're quite popular, you seem to like them and you always seem to suggest more ones or more to do, more ones to do, that English, great. Uh, you always see, seem to suggest more flights to do, which is good. Um, however, I asked on Facebook uh, the other day what you would like to see on my channel and one of the most popular responses was, do something which mirrors real world operations. And I sat and I thought about it and I came up with this solution. Here we have Jet 2. Jet2 is a kind of low-cost-ish carrier based in the north of the UK and they run a fleet of 737-300s, 737-800s, so the NG, and also some 757s. But, I'm not interested in the other fleet, we're only interested in the 737-300s. They have a pretty extensive route network all around Europe. So, I figured that every single episode we would fly from A to B and then back to A. Um, and you guys can kind of mold that experience. So, we're going to use Jet2. Our base, to start with, is going to be Leeds. And you're probably thinking, well, we're at Manchester, so what's going on there? Here's the plan. Call this episode, if you will, the inaugural flight, the inaugural kind of feel for things. Uh, it's, it's a first attempt at getting to know the aircraft, showing you around it from a simming point of view. Uh, it's all of its little quirks and its little features, show you how it handles uh, on and off the autopilot. Um, and we are essentially going to fly from here, we're at Manchester, we're going to do some circuits here, and then we're going to go to Leeds, and that's where the episode is going to end. And then episode number two is going to be us flying out of Leeds to wherever you pick. So, for example, if you picked Amsterdam, then we would do episode two would be Leeds to Amsterdam, and then episode three would be back from Amsterdam to Leeds and that's how it's going to pan out. When we get back to Leeds we're either going to carry on the route network from Leeds or we're going to position this aircraft somewhere else i.e. I don't know Manchester, Belfast, I don't know Glasgow, bleh, wherever you want I don't really care and then we'll fly some more and eventually the idea is to exhaust all of the routes that's possible and uh, then move on to another airline so perhaps we'll take it across the pond and go to uh, southwest operations or 
we'll just see what happens. Maybe Karma would be useful. I don't know if Karma still exists, but I think they do. Karma in South Africa. And, and that's really the plan. So, if you want me to fly somewhere specific that is in the route network for Jet2, you can find Jet2's route network just by going on jet2.com and looking at where they fly their destinations page. Um, then we'll do that, and it should be good fun. I think it'll be a bit different, and it'll be uh, predictable, which is, well, I guess people like predictable. I don't know. That's what you wanted, so that's what's going to happen. Okay, so, well, here at stand uh, 10, just the default one at Manchester, uh, I, I still, to this day, cannot remember who makes this scenery. It's the same people that make Mykonos. Um, they actually sent me this as a, as a copy to, to try out, and I've forgotten the name of them. But I will leave the links to all of the scenery that I use in the description below, and then nobody can complain. Um, but it's been out for quite a while now, and it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Apart from that performance drop over there, but I'm not sure. I mean, it might not be to do with the airfield. It might be to do with the fact that Manchester City Centre is on the horizon. I don't know. Because if you look that way into, like, nothingness, then uh, it's okay. But whatever. It's still flyable. It's just slightly annoying. Um, okay, so we're going to uh, kickstart this off. We're going to fly out of here. Uh, we're going to do some circuits, maybe one or two. Then fly IFR up to Leeds, land in Leeds, episode done. And then I want to hear your suggestions for the uh, the next flight. And the way that it will work is, legitimately, the most popular comment, i.e. the one with the most thumbs up or comment replies or whichever way you do it, uh, is the what is will be the one that I pick. So you, you've heard it from me. Uh, any requests that are not part of the, uh, the Jet2 network will just be ignored because that's not the point of this video. Go request that in a different video. Okay, enough of me yapping. Let's get this show on the road. Right, okay, so first things first, let me just talk you through the menus on the left here. Um, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 menus. Uh, we are running version 1.0.5, which came out a few days ago. And uh, the thing is, unless you move your mouse, it disappears, which is annoying, but whatever. Um, so you've got hints and tips, we don't need to bother with that. The preferences uh, menu is kind of an important one. Um, camera shaking you can use. Uh, the aircraft has winglets, this is done dynamically. So, hang on, let me just show you, can, not that side, let me go to a side where you can actually see the wing. If I can see it, can we see it? Yes, we can, just there. So if I do that, you see, the winglets come on and off on the fly. Kind of like how the NG does with the um, with the heads-up guidance display and stuff like that, it's all on the fly. Um, enable race ice on windscreen, I don't know why you would want that turned off, keep it on, it looks cool. Um, steam gauges, well, this is in the middle here, so if I click that, you'll see on the fly changes to different styles of gauges and then um, the draw vortices is uh, to do with the wing and I guess the condensation on the on the trailing edge or the leading edge of the wing I can't remember which one it is uh, I just keep those on uh, debug mode we don't need it um, reset aircraft and re relocation uh, yes if you want uh, I'm gonna turn that off for now though because if we're gonna be using this aircraft all the time I want it to keep uh, as I left it when I shut it down, which is good. Uh, weights in kilograms and tons, which is exactly what we need because we're in the UK and that's what we use. And uh, enable custom animations and replay. That needs to be on because if I want to do some replays, you're not going to see stuff. Miscellaneous is, uh, well, as you want. Makes no difference. I have the air conditioning sound um, a little bit lower down because I don't know if you can hear that, but if you have it too high, it just sounds ridiculous. Uh, so about there is good. That's okay. Right, next menu, we are uh, pre-flight. So you can see you have your startup options here. Cold and dark, turn around, ready to fly. I'm in turn around at the moment. Uh, this is your aircraft weights, should you desire, or should you choose even, or should you so desire to use these. You can, it's up to you. Um, I use PFPX. There's a nice little profile that someone made on the xplane.org uh, forum. I will link you to that so you can have a PFPX profile. And uh, then the next tab is ground services. So at the moment, we're on APU. You can see it started here. All right, so we don't need any of these. Um, opening doors and stuff like that. Wait, have they added doors in this version? No, they haven't. Okay. For a minute there, I thought they'd added a door. They don't have any opening doors in this version, but that's coming in a, in a future release. Um, so you can connect all the ground power stuff, the ground air stuff. You can also refuel and push back, and your load is, is underneath. I, I don't know why pushback is in the middle. You would think that, uh, fr from an order of how you do things, that like you would have the load sheet 
at the top, and then you'd have refuel underneath and then push back underneath. I don't know why they've done it that way around, but whatever. Anyway, so, uh, we want six tons of fuel, so we're going to load realistic, and you'll see that that will take fuel out of the aircraft. Um, if you look here, you'll see that over time, things start to reduce, which is what you want. Um, and load sheet, well, we can just leave the zero fuel weight as it is, as long as we keep uh, a note of what it was, which is 39.98. Uh, that's good for the, uh, for the FMC calculations. Okay, what's next? Next on the menu is cabin crew. Um, yeah, this doesn't work yet. I don't know why they have menus that don't work. Um, and then you've got your view presets, which does work. You can change the field of view and stuff like that. Uh, which I've probably just broken now. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I should not have clicked that. That was a bad idea. How do I reset it? Uh, what was I on? It doesn't give me a figure. It just gives me a... Damn. It was about there, I'm going to say. It was about there. But yeah, you've got all your presets. So uh, you can use those. And then, what's the uh, failures? Yeah, it's it's kind of... I don't know if all of these work. I've no idea. But I know the full failure model isn't implemented yet, so we'll leave failures out of it. And that's pretty much everything. You can also open the ground menu by clicking on the ground call menu, uh, ground call button here. Um, but other than that, that is pretty much all the, the interaction that you can do. Um, but the funny thing is, that's all you need. You don't need any more than that. I mean, this aircraft is far from complete, but what you have in it works very, very well. It's the most complete simulation I've ever seen of a 737 uh, on X-Plane so far. Um, and a 737 Classic uh, across all platforms, without a shadow of a doubt. So uh, it's definitely one to, uh, to add to your fleet, your virtual fleet. Okay, so first things first, it comes with a checklist. It's pretty nifty animation. Doesn't matter where you are, it always slides in and out. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact that you can't move it. Um, you genuinely can't move it. It's stuck in that corner. You can close it that way, um, but you can't move it, which is annoying. So if uh, one of my overlays like goes over the top of it, then I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. So pre-flight um, checklist. This is actually uh, the checklist that it comes with doesn't look like this. This is uh, someone made it and sent it to me. Um, I'll put the link to it um, in the video description below so you can have your own checklist like this. It's pretty. It's more in depth than the one that comes with the IXCG. So uh, I would definitely recommend this. Um, so pre-flight pins and covers. Well, it's not modeled, so we'll just assume removed. Oxygen again is not quite modeled, but you can press stuff and you will get the noise. You hear that there? There we go. Um, instrument transfer switches are on the overhead panel, uh, which are all here, and they're all set to normal. And the window heats up at the top, same place as the NG, so you can put those on like so. Um, the air conditioning and pressurization stuff, which is all the way over here. Now, I spent a little bit of time with a, a real 737 Classic pilot, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I haven't forgot what he's taught me. Uh, if I get it wrong, I am sorry. Um, I'm not going to tell you his name because then it'll make him look bad, but he did go through everything. I'm just really useless when it comes to remembering things. However, packs are off, ISO's auto, all the bleeds are on, and then coming down here, we want to set the uh, flight level that we're going at, or the flight altitude. We're only going to 9-0 to lead, so that's the highest we're going to go. So that can stay like that. We'll make sure the um, switch is set to ground. And everything else is fine as it is. There was a thing about setting the cabin altitude to uh, 200 feet below the landing altitude. But that actually means I have to get the landing altitude, which is 680. Uh, so we can set that. 3, 4, 5, 680. And then we'll set the cabin altitude to 200 feet below that. Um, so 3, 4, 480. There we go. And that's pretty much set. That's how this panel needs to be, apparently. Um, parking brake, well, that's pedestal. That's set. Um, the engine start levers are cut off. The rudder and aileron trim is zero. Uh, you can see here it's all zero. Uh, taxi and takeoff briefing, well, we're a lonely warrior today, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, fuel, we have uh, six tons now. Actually, just a little bit more than six because there's fuel in the center. And the pumps are on. 
uh, and we can put the center pumps on too as well. The passenger signs are in the middle here, so they're coming on. Uh, CDU pre-flight, that's the next thing we need to do, so we can put the checklist away while we sort out the FMC, and uh, I'll show you around that. I apologize if I sound a bit like stuffed up. I don't have a cold, but I just had a really hot salad. It had like jalapenos in it, and like my eyes are watering, which is really awkward, but yeah, whatever. Um, so, index, uh, we can say that we are at Manchester. And we're going from Manchester. Uh, we're going to go to Leeds eventually, even though we're doing circuits first, but whatever. Uh, we're going to be departing from 05 left, and we're going to be calling ourselves Shannix. One Papa positioning and route. We're going to depart on the Pole Hill departure, which is Pole Hill 4 Sierra from 05 left, and then we can activate that. That's all we need to do for now. Zero fuel weight. We go back to the, uh, not the pre flight, sorry, the ground connections, uh, ground services menu. 39.9, so we'll just round that up to 40, because it's 39.98. We only need 6 tons to get there, so we'll put that in planned. Reserves will put us 2. Cost index can stay at 20. Flight level is 90. I'm not bothered about anything else. Um, transition altitude is 5,000 feet. N1 limit, well. Hmm. I almost want to. Here's the thing. There is a significant difference in sound between full power and a D rate in this thing. They have got the sounds spot on. I kind of don't want to make you like cream yourself by going toga on the first flight. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a pretty conservative D rate. And then when we fly to somewhere that requires full power, then we'll use it. And then you'll be able to see the difference. So we'll do 18k, and we'll do 50 degrees. That's a pretty hefty D rate with flat five, like so. And that's all we need to do. Um, yeah, thrust reduction here is a thousand feet now, so we'll just stick that in there. So that's 134. So we need to book that 134. It's already set. 234 is the runway heading. Can you tell I've done this before? No, it's not. It's uh, 054, like that. 3,500 feet because we're going to be doing circuits initially. Left flight director, right flight director. And the auto throttle as well, which is something I'm not used to in the NG. Uh, you arm the auto throttle on the ground at the gate. You don't have to wait till you're entering the runway or whatever. Auto brake is RTO. And we need to sort out the bugs. And by bugs, I mean the speed tape here. The I think it's called ASI. Uh, speed indicator. Yeah, the ASI. So there's a speed tape on the side of the PFD, which will display the speeds digitally, that's fine. But then you also have the analog kind of display on the left. Okay, so the bugs here, um, there is five. One, two, three, four, five. And the way it works is the first one goes to 80 knots. The second one, if it will go to 80 knots, come on, there we go. The second one goes to 121, uh, one, which is V1, so it's in between the first little indent after 120. Uh, the next one is rotate, which is 123, like so. Um, and this is V2, which is 134, and you can check that where there's 130, there's 132, and there's 134. The next one is V2 plus 15, so we're looking at 149, which is about there. And then the next one is 210. This is apparently how they have it set up. That's just a kind of a jet two way of doing things. You can also set the barrow here to 300 feet, like so, just in case we have a problem. Um, the only thing I've noticed is that this V2 speed versus this orange uh, bug, if I manually change this V2 speed to like 155 or something and click it, it doesn't update, and I don't know why it should update, uh, but it doesn't. Um, so I guess that's something they need to fix. Um, and you could also do the speeds on the other side if you want, but we don't need to because we're just on this side. Uh, this does have a shared cockpit file now, and it works quite well. So if you are planning on uh, getting X-Plane to, to, you know, to fly with a friend or something, you can get the Smart Co-Pilot um, add-on, and there is a config floating around which works quite well for the IXCG. So maybe one day I'll do some shared cockpit with somebody and you can see how it works. I need to put the second FMC on the legs page. 
and that can stay on the takeoff reference page. Okay, so Q&H is 1020. That's set once. We also need to set it on the standby, so twice and then over there three times is already done. We can sort the ND out. So the ND, you need to go to map mode. This is pretty nice. When you switch it, you get a little preview, so you don't need to keep looking back. And same for this side. And we'll bring the range into 10 on both sides. That's pretty much all we need. And that is pretty much it as far as the setup goes. Um, one thing we need to do though is remove the decision height completely. So we'll move that to minus 20. It's just good practice. Um, and that is, is really it. We can turn the position light on. We can turn on the anti-collision light. And then we can complete the rest of the checklist. So um, CDU preflight is now complete. Takeoff speeds we have V1, 121, VR, 123, and V2 is 134. MCP set V2134 with uh, 054, which is the runway heading, and then altitudes block of 3,500 feet for the circuit. And that is a pre flight checklist completed. So uh, we're done with that. The next one is the before start checklist. So we can do that once we uh, get rid of the jetway and stuff like that. Speaking of jetway, for some reason, this thing will not move until you uh, release a parking brake, which is kind of annoying because, uh, yeah, that's not the sequence of events for, for, uh, for jetways, but it is what it is. Um, so in the menu on the left, we can go to ground services, and then we can go uh, push back. We want to go straight like this, and we should get a nice little tug. There it is. Um, and then when we're ready to go, we just release the brakes, and then we have full control of the tug with the tiller, which looks a bit ridiculous. But it works quite well. I mean, that animation, they're going to improve, but it is what it is. The only thing that I don't like, and I'm going to show you in a minute, um, is the duration of the pushback. It seems to be fixed. The time seems to be fixed. So let's just make sure everything is on. And we're on the uh, APU. We are. So we can disconnect the parking brakes, like so. And then we can look at what starts to happen. So we release, and this thing starts to move, which is fine. Now... This, this is a standard pushback distance. We want to get the aircraft on this line here. So we want to do a continuous swoop so the tail faces out to the north. Um, but for some reason, and I don't know how it calculates it, um, when you finish the turn, sometimes halfway through, it just stops and you've not even completed your pushback. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about. And I don't know how you make the length of the pushback longer. But it just seems to take an absolute age. Um, so I'll show you. Oh, look, the main wheels aren't moving. Actually, nothing's moving. The actual wheels are stuck. It must just be like a slew state. But again, I assume they're planning on working on this. Um, so we'll start to turn the aircraft. Very, very shallow because I'm rubbish at pushing back. But either way. Put a little bit more turn into it, I guess. Right, now we can properly turn all the way around, all the way, even more, even more, even more, all the way now. And that is probably about as good as it's going to get from me. So, I've straightened it up, kind of, and you notice it's already stopped. So I just about did it. Set the parking brake, the thing will automatically go. So that's a little thing that I don't like. I wish you could control the um, the, the whole pushback itself. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. Okay, so we're ready to start the engine. The packs are off. Uh, we can just run through that before start checklist. So flight deck doors not modeled. Doors and windows are closed. You can open them. And there's the, there is an audible sound change. Uh, an audible sound change? What else is there? An audible change. Lol. Uh, Anti-collision light is on. And uh, transponder... Well, whatever. We don't really need the transponder on at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll set it to 2000, um, and then we're done. So we can start the engine. So it's as simple um, as the NG. You just flick this switch to ground, like so, and you'll watch um, everything start to come alive. So the first thing you'll see is the N2 rotation, and then you'll see straight away after that, or you should do, there we go, the M1 rotation. And you can hear the sound. And then you're looking for 25% N2 and a positive N1 rotation. So there's 25% and then we can just bring the fuel in. 
and uh, everything should start. Now, if I open the window, you could hear the engine sounds are insanely good. And the starter's cut out. So now we can, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the window open for this stuff. So there we go, we'll turn it to ground and you'll hear it start to spool. You hear it sort of declutches down first and then starts. So there's the M2. There's M1. One, two, three, four, five. Positive M1, let's go with the fuel. How nice does that sound? Stick the head out the window and just look at the engine, it's so good. Cutout's gone on one, so we can close the window. So it wants 3.4 units of trim, so we just need to trim forward a little bit, not too much. There we go. Uh, we need flat five, so one, two, five. And we can look at the wing, and we can see those coming down like so. There is uh, not much sound out the back, sadly, but oh well. I don't know if that's because I'm on the outside or the inside. But still, you can see the control surfaces and the flaps. So, full left, full right. See, everything's very smooth. And we'll go back to the, uh, the flight deck and you'll see everything move. And then, of course, the next thing on the list is the rudders. So, full left on the rudder and full right. And that's good. Okay, so, two engine starts. We can bring the generators on. You see the flashing lights as the electrical power is transferred. Uh, pito heats, pito static heats. We can bring the packs on now, like so. And we can turn the APU bleed off. We don't need that anymore. And then we can ditch the APU, turn the con uh, ignition switches to continuous, taxi, and turn off lights are on. And we can bring out the uh, after or before taxi checklist. So generators are on, pito heats are on, anti ice isn't required, air conditioning and pressurization. That's a good point. We need to flick this now across to the flight state. FLT, uh, so that's set. Isolation valves auto. Uh, the engine start switch is a continuous recall, which is uh, here. It's checked, nothing. Um, engine start levers idle, and the uh, flight controls are checked. Ground equipment's clear, and APU we don't need anymore. So, that's that. Now, we are good to taxi to runway 05 left. So we'll release the brakes by tapping the tow brakes, like so, and uh, we'll go to taxi. It will go under its own steam because it's very light, but I'll give it a bit of power just to get it moving. And then we can idle the power. There we go. So nice. It's so subtle. Right, weather radar we can bring on now, and we can also turn the weather on on the... Uh, Left ND, you can see it's doing a scan, a self-test. Uh, it's actually not doing a self-test, I'm lying. I just need to, ch to uh, change the tilt of it. On the ground, about five or six up, you should be okay. And there you go, you can see some weather. Oh no, actually, I do think it was doing a test. My bad. I can't remember if these do tests first or not. Maybe not, I don't know. But the weather radar is now on. And uh, actually, one thing I did forget to do was start the clock. My bad. So we'll start the clock on the other side, there we go, just so we've got a rough estimate of how long we've been uh, started for. So we're going to turn right here, this is taxiway uh, Charlie I think, and then that will run across to Alpha and then we'll taxi all the way down to, uh, we're not going to use full length, we'll go from like Alpha Golf 1 I think, or the other one, it was Alpha Foxtrot and the other. But you can see everything's shaking. That's, it looks really, really good. 
It, it um, also taxis very well as well. Like there's no uh, sort, of, sort of jerky movements. It's very, very smooth to taxi. So I was coming back past the AVP. It's where TAS was last year. TAS is in that building there. Well, actually, TAS is the whole thing, but the main exhibitor hall is that building there. Another bunch of you there. It's good fun. You see how smooth it turns the corners. This is just minimal input. Like if you actually watch the tiller as I go around the corner. See, it just moves it very, very slowly, but it's enough just to turn it around the corner. It's not snappy like every other aircraft I've flown, even in P3D and, and in FSX and, and in X-Plane, is very snappy. Uh, this definitely isn't that. Okay, so we're on Alpha now. I'm going to start to uh, turn things on. So we'll turn the transponder on. We'll also pull out the uh, before takeoff checklist. So flaps are five planned and five uh, green light. Stabilizer trim is 3.4 units. Cabin call. They have been advised. And the transponder is now TARA. And that is the before takeoff checklist completed. So we'll take the next left. We don't need to go full length. Um, and then we'll get on out of here. So initially, we're just going to be taking off. Uh, doing a few left-hand uh, circuits, maybe one or two, and then eventually take off and we'll head to Leeds. And, uh, I'll kind of talk you through my process of flying it. Okay, so uh, we want the strobe light on, which is here, like that. We also want to turn on the inboard lights, like so. We don't need all of the lights on this daytime, so that's fine. Uh, we can start the clock on this side. Everything is pretty much set to go. Yep, all good. We could do a pax off takeoff, but we don't need to. It's fine. Okay, so runway 05 left. Approach path is clear. There is no TCAS on this aircraft at the moment, so that's uh, something that's coming into play in, uh, I guess, a future update. Okay. Is zero 05 left. Right. So, take off on this aircraft is same, same as the NG, but I haven't found a click spot for Toga. Um, maybe there is one, I've just not checked. So, you have to do it the traditional way, which is clicking this thing here, uh, which is the kind of black buttons behind the throttle. So, standard 40%, you'll see it spool like this. Like so. And then there's no asymmetry, so we can press toga, and away it goes. You can see my throttle versus where the auto throttle's going. A little bit of sway there as I put the power in. So the power's now in, the power is set. And there's 80 knots, and it should be thrust hold, which it is. Screaming down 05 left. There's V1. Rotate, very gentle rotation, or to snap it into the sky. There we go. Positive rate of climb, and there goes the gear. Trim. Um, this is just very, very minimal input. I'm not doing anything at all. It's pretty, it's pretty insane. Like I've let go of my. Uh, my joystick at the moment and it's just flying itself. I'm actually on my mouse now. There we go. Okay. Weather update. Great. So passing a thousand feet, N1. There's climb power. So we want to accelerate to 210 knots. So we go into MCP speed and then we're going to increase to 210. We're going to pitch forward for that. Like so. Remember, we're still in heading select, so we're not following the LMAP path. But we're going to pitch it for 210 knots, like so. Trim it forward a little bit. There we go. Now we can go flap one, so flap one now. And we're going to spin it around to the left, so we'll go about 300 degrees. So you'll see the flight director move. And around we go. 
that fuel warning is to do with the centre tank, don't worry about that. Okay. Power's coming back. And we can go uh, flap up now. We can pitch for that. Probably should have turned uh, right, not left, because the bad frame rate is going to kill us. But the thing is, even with the bad frame rate, it's actually still massively flyable, which is beautiful. Okay, so there's 3,500 feet. Pitch those down. And we're rolling out heading 300. Perfect. Do the nose uh, forward trim. And there we go. Pretty much a little bit up. Just look at the vertical speed indicator just below the uh, or to the right of the ND, and that's pretty much level flight right there. And I'm not even touching the uh, the yoke. Okay, so we can bring the gear to off and the auto brake to off as well. And we can actually we're going to leave those in continuous. So after takeoff checklist, engine bleeds are on, packs on. Um, auto even. Landing gear up and off, flaps up and no lights. And uh, let's not descend there too much. Uh, altimeters is so uh, we're keeping them at 1020 because we're below transition level, transition altitude even. Right, so we'll spin it to a downwind leg, so we want to go to the 230. Like so. Now we'll turn those center pumps off now because we really don't need them. We probably didn't need them in the first place, to be honest. Descend it a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, we're back at 3,500. Got a Manchester ship canal in front of us. It is indeed. If we look out to our left, we should see Manchester Airport. He says. Yep, there it is. Beautiful. Okay, right, so now we're on this um, now we're on this downwind leg. We can set the arrival. So we're going to be landing on the runway that we uh, took off from. Uh, actually, because I set that to leads, didn't I? So, um, that was probably a bad idea. It's fine, we can just do some visual approaches. I, c I could change it all, but for the sake of an ILS, it's not worth it. Or we can just fly this thing manually around. So what we'll do is we'll fly a visual approach on 05 left, we'll land, we'll uh, touch and go, we're not going to slow down, we're going to go back up, and then we're going to fly the, the pole hill departure and uh, go to Leeds. Leeds is an interesting place, especially today. Actually, if I just go onto my other screen and find you the, uh, the net for Leeds, it's currently 360, 25 knots. QNH is 1020, uh, so same as Manchester. So they're going to be landing runway 34, which is, uh, sorry, 32 even, not 34. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, here's, here's how it's going to go. I'm going to trim it so we don't keep climbing. I'm going to keep the auto brake off. I'm going to set flight level 90. Like this. Uh, 90. I'm going to set runway 054 heading. 054. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is turn off the auto, uh, the flight directors completely. So now we're just manually flying this. I swear I just saw Liverpool off to the right then. Yeah, look. There's runway 27 at Liverpool. Nice. Okay, so. We're going to start to turn in start descending at the same time so we'll take flat one and then we'll slow it to 170 like so we're already on idle power so it's fine now we can arm the spoilers because as soon as we touch down um, but yeah as soon as we touch down we should uh, when we apply full power the spoilers will go back in anyway so is 2500. So 
So we'll fly a sort of visual base leg for our for zero 05 left. And we'll roll out in about 145, and then we can look left and see where we are in relativity to the field. We'll take flat 5. It's flat 5 coming down. We look left, there it is. Okay. Slowing down nicely. This is an absolute dream to I just can't get over how good the, the flight dynamics are tuned in this thing. You you would be. I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say a bad word about how this thing flies. It's insane. Okay. Start a gentle left hand turn. Back towards two th uh, sorry, zero five left. Elevator trim. Effect. All the wings level. I can just keep it at this configuration for the moment. We don't need to. Uh, we don't need to do anything just yet. What I will do though is I will lock the landing speed with this weight so we'll do flat 30 so 129 so we'll come in at uh, 139 with that wind component okay so we'll take gear down now and with that we'll go flat 15 start bringing the speed back Just continue to roll the flaps out to flat 30. So flat 25, flat 30, and then 139. Okay, because I want to have full control of this, I'm going to take the auto thrust out, or the auto throttle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the way you do this is you move your actual physical throttles, like you can see the white things that are moving, that's my throttles. You line it up with the auto throttle. Uh, like the opaque one, sorry, the transparent one even, not the opaque one. Uh, and then once you've got it there, you can take it out. So just turn it off like that, and then you have control of the thrust, which is what we need. Okay, so this is looking stable. You can actually fly this aircraft just based on sound. It's insane. I could just blank out the speed now and I'd know what speed I was at. It's just, it's so weird. I've never ever had an experience where I can fly an aircraft just based on how it sounds. Like, I'm not even looking at the speed. I know that we're a little bit too slow, so I'm going to put the power in a little bit. But then, as soon as it recovers, you just idle the power a little bit. It's crazy. Scenery is looking magnificent. Okay, a little bit high, so we'll reduce the power and drop the nose a touch. There we go. Small adjustments in this thing go a long way. We should come back up the glide pretty soon. 500. It's 500 feet. There we go. Back on the glide. Lift the nose up a little bit. 400. A bit of up trip. A bit of power to compensate the pitch up. 300. B1 
one, rotate. Passive rate, gear up. Pretty much go to flat five now, flat ten. Flat five. Trimmed it nicely. Very good. Okay, so uh, we want to go auto throttle in, speed 210. We also want to go command A, L nav, and uh, actually we'll do level change of 210, I think. 210. There we go. And that's back on the profile. We can also put the flight directors in as well. I forgot to do that. Nice. Now we can select flat one now. Thousand three hundred feet. Okay, now we can go to Leeds. I was going to do a couple of circuits, but that one was fine. Okay, so we're going to fly the Pole Hill departure. Now we can bring the flaps in now and go into. Uh, actually, we can't go into Leeds. Can we can't want to be The flaps in. We'll do two fifty knots. And we'll turn the gear off. Brakes are already off. We'll bring the condition, uh, the ignition switches to off. Everything else can stay on for the moment. We're flying at 9-0, so we'll keep the landing lights on. <coughs> uh, we're climbing to a flight level, so 1013 we need to set. Twice. And three times. Like so beautiful. Uh, so you went. You saw I went to press VNAV and it didn't work. It's because we don't have the arrival. So we're going to be arriving on the ILS runway 32. And it's going to be from nowhere. Uh, so we're going to put that in. And then we're going to go from there direct to the center fix. Close the gap. Like this. And then, and then at this point, uh, we still can't do VNAV for some reason. I think that might be because of the altitude. Yeah, it is. Um, so I need to clear that. And also clear that, like so. And I'll also clear that as well because that's an irrelevant restriction. And then we now should work. There we go. Perfect. We square off the heading. So off we go. So we'll look at the wing. Look at that. Look at that. It's going. Look at Manchester in the background over there. That looks so nice. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. <laughs> Let's have a look at the other side. I can't remember which button it is. Was that one? There we go. There's the other side. And through the clouds. Looks so so nice. So so nice. Must be reaching nine zero. Yep, we are. Cloud surfing to Leeds. Okay, so uh, set up the uh, set up the arrival. So flap, we can use uh, flap. I'm actually going to use flap 30 at Leeds because the runway is pretty small. We need to set the ILS frequency, which is 110.9. Uh, we'll put that in nav. So 1109. Uh, you can actually set it. Wait, hell, huh? right 110. You can set it on both of them uh, if you want to do like a cat. Whichever category I got there. Whichever category I have actually want to do even. Nine, like that. The course is 320. So we'll stick that in both sides. Like so. 320. Perfect. And then we want to look at the uh, decision altitude. So. It's uh, category one, 870 feet, which we set here. So uh, 820, 40, 60, 70. It's about there. So 870. Um, so after Pole Hill, which is just in front of us, let's move the ND out a little bit. Uh, we're going to turn right. We don't need to go that all that way. What we can actually do is just turn right now and give ourselves a bit of a shortcut. So we'll fly heading 085. And we'll start to descend. This is how quick this flight is. Uh, 
whoops, and we'll go to 4,000 feet. And we'll level change it, so the thrust should come back to idle, which it is doing. And then we need to set the leads pressure, which is 1020. 1020. 1020. And then finally, 1020. So. We also want to set the bugs. Kind of similar to how it works with the, um, with the departure bugs. So 80 knots, and then you double bug uh, the, your, your approach speed to your VAP, which is 125. So uh, we need to go, let's have a look. 122, 124, 125. So you want to double bug that. And then you want to bug the uh, VAP plus 15, so 130, oh, sorry, 140. And then you want 210, and then the orange will go on 250. So that's pretty much that sorted. Sweet. Everything is, is set. Uh, you will notice sometimes that the landing gear lights will go to red. That just means that your power is idle. It's natural real-world logic that... When the power is idle, the aircraft assumes you need to have the landing gear down. Um, so you get that stupid red light system. Um, and I actually think on some of them, you actually get a gear horn as well, which is really, really frustrating because you have to keep cancelling it. Um, so imagine every five minutes having to press a button to stop the horn from going off. But I'm not sure if that's in this aircraft or in another one. Maybe I just made that up. I'm not quite sure. But uh, that's that as far as the, uh, the gear system goes, the gear lighting system goes. So, it's saying we're going to be level at 4,000 feet pretty soon. I am not happy with that, because I'm all about continuous descent. So, I'm going to VS it. I'm also going to start to slow us down to 210 knots. So, we'll do that uh, as we bring the nose up. We should be visual with leads at some point. Uh, it's actually behind us somewhere. Uh, let's see. I'm not quite sure where. But is there somewhere? The problem is, is the sky is so weird, I can't really see anything. Where are you, Leeds? Please. We'll see it when we're established, anyway. Actually, we could just look out the wing, couldn't we? There's a forward engine view. So nice, so nice. Okay, looking good. I'm going to increase that rate of descent a little bit now we've slowed down. 1,000 feet will do. And I'm going to swing us to the left. So, 0, 4, 5. And we can descend down to 3,000 feet. With that, I'm going to put flat 1 out. As we go through the clouds. How cool does that look? How cool does that look? This whole frame rate thing is slightly annoying me, but whatever. It never used to be this bad. I think I've done something to my X plane. But, uh, oh well, it's, it's fine. We're, we're good. We're good. Okay. Slowing to 170 now. And with that, we can take flat 5. the glide. So I actually might want to turn right a little bit. I don't want to be too high. 3070. Bring the range in. Looking okay. Yes, yeah, like 650 just so we can slow down to. Is that leads there? There's leads. Beautiful. Separate the center a little bit. Nice and feet. Keep an eye on leads. See the glides coming in on us, which is what we need. And we 
a left turn now. Zero, five, zero, that'd be okay. Just going through the glide. We need to be a little bit underneath it to uh, be able to turn and descent. So we're good as we are. We've got about two and a half miles to the centre line, so we'll leave it about another mile and then we'll swing it in. Pretty much see leads now off to the left of us. There it is. Let's see if we can judge this turn correctly. Three, two, one, round we go. So we'll do three five zero and then we'll localize it. Coming round. Now hopefully we shouldn't roll out, it should just actually capture the just about. Yeah, we've not rolled out, that's good. Okay, cool. There's localizer. And we want to press approach. And at this point we could enable both autopilots, but it's a vis and visual, so there's no point in uh, doing that. Okay, so gear down. And we'll take flat 15. And we'll reduce the speed to 150. And then we will uh, set the auto brake to... Uh, I'm going to use 3, because I, I can never slow down the time it leads for some reason. Let's have a look, 125, so we're only 135 with flat 30, actually we're using flat full on there. So 135 with flat 4. Okay, same thing again with the auto thrust. Disconnect it there. That should give me full control over it. We'll knock the autopilot out, like so. I think I need to press it again actually. Sick. Now I have full control, a bit of power, okay speed stable, we're on the glide, we need to arm the uh, speed brake and with that, if I can keep it stable, I would love to pull the checklist out but it doesn't look like we're going to have time for that. bit of a crosswind. It's trying to push me. Yeah, the checklist will have to wait, I think. Maybe not. Let's see if we can do it really quickly. There we go. Cabin call will pretend we have actual people in the back. Uh, in it. Yeah. Engine start switches are continuous. Speed brakes are on. Landing gears down. And the flaps are 40 green light. So the landing checklist is uh, completed. Okay. Let's land this thing and hopefully slow down. A bit more power, actually. Although we're a bit high, so I can drop the nose and then trade that for power, uh, trade that for speed even. Sink it. Does that can happen? Okay, glides coming back on us. Good. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. slow. Light slow. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And we are. Versus.
60 knots. Perfect. Auto brake disarmed. Welcome to Leeds. Mandatory wing view. It's so nice to fly. So, so nice to fly. Okay. So we'll vacate here. We'll go around the loop. And then back down. Bring the flaps in. I have to like spam the button because I forget. Uh, we can also bring the speed brake in too. Just check that's gone in. Yep, good. We can start the APU. Kill the flight directors. We don't need those anymore. Taxi down the runway, vacate left on the, I think it's Alpha, and then we'll just park up one of the remote stands down the bottom. Okay, vacated, lights can come off, strobe light can come off as well, throw the APU generators on. Turn the transponder off. to the left here, around the back of all the other aircraft. Air tours, nice. Old school aircraft, or old school, old school airlines even. And then a, is that an Air Malta? Yeah, Air Malta and then a Thomas Cook, very nice. Switch them back to ground. Take the next stand on the left, the side of the Thomas Cook. Swing it around. Like so. Thomas Cook, how are you doing? And we'll stop about there. Parking brake set. Very good. Everything is on. APU generator or APU bleed can come on. And we can kill the engines. Listen to this. How beautiful was that? How beautiful. Okay, so we're at Leeds. Good old Leeds. Let me uh, let me go outside. Actually, you know what? We could just probably just clip through this, couldn't we? There we go. 
There we go. Nice. Oh, look at that parking. How atrocious. Whatever. It is what it is. Right, so yeah, where it leads. So there's my little first inaugural flight in the IXC G737. Um, as I said, this is now our base for the foreseeable future. So it's now up to you to mold where we fly. So it's uh, down to you to write in the comments where you would like to see me fly to. And uh, if you could actually help me out, this would be really great. Because I hate trying to find scenery for X-Plane because I always get the wrong version. So, for example, if you say, Matt, go to Amsterdam, could you please provide at least the author of the scenery, if not a link? Um, and I would, would be most appreciative of that. Uh, it would be very, very useful. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's me done here from, from Leeds, from the IXCG, from the Jet 2 IXCG. Uh, I look forward to seeing your suggestions, and I look forward to, uh, to flying this thing around Europe. It should be, uh, it should be cool. Okay, thanks always for the support, thanks for watching, and until the next video, I bid you all farewell. Bye-bye.